Hello, um, welcome to tonight's show. We are live from our studios here in Accra. This is Majority Caucus Live on your joint news channel, channel 006. Uh, when you tune in, you should be watching us live as we try to, you know, as it were, open the discussion for tonight's edition of Majority Caucus. My name is Ali Dawood. I'll be your host for tonight's discussion. Um, I'm sure you have paid attention to the keen discussions that has been going on on the several media platforms regarding um, some prophecies here and there, some pastors making strange, rather strange prophecies, and the counter response from other responsible uh, men of God. And to that extent, we would analyze the situation in studio tonight, tell you all about prophecy and all about pastoral business, who is real and who is not, who is doing it with, uh, with mischievous intent, who is doing it in bad feet, who is doing it to score cheap political points. We will tell you all about it uh, on tonight's edition of Majority Caucus. At the end, or towards the end of the program, we would attempt to also discuss the issue about Andrew Solomon, or Solomon Andrew, whatever version you like to have it. Uh, our concern really is to set the record straight, uh, the purpose behind the New York Times release, whether or not it was necessary, if the president has called him to apologize, it is important to him, or is it important for him to put it in the public domain? We will tell you all about it. We will also take the phone calls at the twilight of the program so you could share your views on air. For tonight, to help me with the discussion, um, I want to call him a resident uh, pastoral analyst. He's, he's the man of God when it comes to political analysis, socio-political and religious analysis of issues. And so tonight I have been joined by Mr. Samuel George. He's a <laughs> member of the government communication team. He's also an IT specialist. Thank you very much, Mr. Samuel George. Thank you. Thank you, Ali. It's interesting to know that I'm now a, a pastoral <laughs> resident <laughs> analyst. But, 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 but George, let, let, let's be fair. Um, getting revelations, the ability to prophesy uh, is, 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 is a gift within the Christian domain. I, I, is that right? Yeah, very, very, very so. Um, Which means it's not everybody that can prophesy. Well, the, the Bible, let me say a very good evening to our viewers. Um, the Bible tells us that um, in the New Testament mm -hmm. era, which we live in, there are, there are five gifts. Some are called to be teachers, some are called to be evangelists, some are called to be pastors, some are called to be prophets. Mm. You know, there's, there's a fivefold ministry. Um, in, in very unique instances, you see all fivefold ministries manifest in one individual. Mm -hmm. It is not common, but it is, it is unique. They are, they're people, they're men of God in whom you see all fivefold ministries uh, uh, manifest. You, you look at somebody like, um, the, the pastor for the senior pastor for ICGC, mm -hmm. uh, Pastor Mensah Waterbill. Yeah. His ministry is, is, is a teaching ministry. Okay. And, and, and so you see that he's been called to be a teacher. Mm -hmm. That is one, one, one aspect of the fivefold ministry. You, you, you have people who are called to be evangelists. Okay, somebody like Bishop Charles Ajinasari mm -hmm. is an evangelist. And so you realize that he's always embarking on crusades. Okay. okay, evangelizing, taking the gospel outside. So you have people who have various. Uh, 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 ministries, okay. In some people, you see fivefold ministry. In some, you see three of the five. In some, but in most cases, you see people having one speciality they've been called to. And so, there are people who are called, who God calls to prophet, uh, calls as prophets, mm -hmm. and 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 who are given the gift of prophecy. But then you see, prophecy is simply God's mind, which has been revealed to mankind. And any, as Christians, we believe that anybody who is in tune with your spirit, with a spirit man. Or with the spirit, you the, the Lord can speak to you. Okay. The fact that God doesn't speak to only pastors; mm. He speaks to everybody who has a personal relationship with Him. He speaks to us. Some people are, are awake and and they hear His voice clear, like a human being. Some people it happens to them in dreams. Some people it happens to them. Uh, it's called a trance. Mm. They are awake, but they go unconscious and and they, they, they see things out of this world. It's a trance, mm. okay. And so there are various ways in which God speaks to people, but God speaks to everybody who is His child. But some people have a special gift of prophecy, and and prophecy too. Um, the, 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 there are two types of prophecy mm. where God 
uh, there's what we call for, for, for knowledge, okay, where people are able to prophesy about what would happen in times to come, okay, where mm -hmm. God reveals to them what is yet to be, okay, and then there are certain other, the other type of prophecies where God reveals to you what is happening at the point in time, but in the spirit realm, okay, where God opens your eyes to see the spirit realm. And so these are some of the intricacies of of the of the of the whole issue of prophecy, which uh, it's 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 a it's a very intricate matter to deal mm. with, especially when it's a spiritual matter. But I think that is how far we want to go with regards. Yeah, to yeah. Let, let me ask you this question that I'm sure most Ghanaians uh, want, you know, answers to. How do we know this prophecy uh, as on good faith, and how do we know this is uh, th this is a false prophecy? Uh, what is the you, you see, you see, you see. Ali, there is no, there is no uh, scientific formula mm -hmm. or almighty formula for mm -hmm. you to, to say I'm setting in the variables okay. per Check. se because this is a spiritual matter. Mm -hmm. But then the Bible gives you guidelines. Mm. The Bible tells you that prophecy is meant to edify. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. It is meant to encourage. That is what the Bible says when you read the Amplified Version. Mm. Okay, it tells you it is meant to edify and encourage and strengthen your spirit man. Mm. And so at the end of the day, those are some of the criteria you want to put prophecy into. Mm. Even if the prophecy carries negative message, okay. the way and manner in which it will be couched, it is supposed to strengthen you mm. and, and, and give you courage to face whatever challenge is ahead. And do not forget, mm -hmm. there's one very, very, very common uh, uh, phrase in, in, in scripture or in Bible terminology that God reveals to redeem. Mm. And so when God reveals to you, it's because he wants to redeem, especially when there's a negative connotation. It will be, it will be very wrong for us to just say blanket. There's, there's, there's a cut, die in the wool uh, formula for you to use. But every prophecy has to be tested. Mm -hmm. And God also tells us, the Bible tell, God tells us in the Bible that when he gives prophecy, he gives witnesses to that prophecy. Okay. And so he does not put prophecy in the mouth of one man. Mm. But when he puts prophecy in the mouth of one man, he tells us that two or three witnesses shall arise to confirm this is scripture. Mm. This is not me or any man of God saying this. This is scripture in black and white. And so at the end of the day, when prophecy comes, it must edify. Okay. It must strengthen the spirit man. It must encourage. And then there must be witnesses to that because God is not a God of confusion. At all. And so when, when, when prophecy comes and it generates controversy, mm. it generates confusion, then you must be careful and, and, and reorient yourself and find out where this prophecy is coming in. Especially when you bear in mind that the Bible tells us that the devil clothes himself mm -hmm. like an angel of light. Mm. The devil clothes himself like an angel of light. And so it is easy for you to hear from the devil and think you've heard from God. And that is why the Bible goes further to tell us, test all spirits. Okay. You understand me? So mm -hmm. for me, the Bible is, is the perfect guide for daily living. Mm -hmm. It gives you real life instances, tells you what the possible scenarios that will arise. It tells you prophecy will come, mm -hmm. but it can come from the devil because okay. the devil can clothe himself as an angel of light. Mm -hmm. And so when you hear, or when you hear the Spirit speak to you, test the Spirit. Mm. Uh, th th this indeed is an interesting insight of biblical uh, analysis with regards to prophecy and our current uh, democratic dispensation. Now I'm coming to the issue of religion and politics. Uh, Sam George, by your earlier submission, I take it that it is not everybody that has the gift to prophesy. Clearly. Good. And so this uh, pastor, what's his name? Ousu Bempa. Ousu Bempa. I mean, this is a, a damaging prophecy that the president would die unless he comes to him and does some one or two things. I really am not interested in that. My, my, my worry is the platform that uh, he's using. He, he's using the Christianity and he's using the highest level. I know that... Um, in the Christian fraternity, you need to attain certain level before you really can prophesy, or God will choose you really. Well, uh, uh, but the, the, the question really is not there. I want to know: Is it safe? Is it a safe practice to try to mix 
Christianity, especially the uh, duty of prophecy with politics. You see, Ali, mm. I have listened to what has panned out since last week, Friday, mm -hmm. the, 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 the program on Adum yes. FM where uh, the, the, the Reverend Usu Bempa mm -hmm. put out his prophecies. Mm -hmm. And I've listened to the counter messages yeah. that have come from the likes of Bishop Charles Ajinasari. We'll, we'll Archbishop. be playing the voice um, very soon. Uh, we are trying to uh, get it well edited and then we'll play to our viewers. Yeah, Ar Bishop Duncan Nicholas mm -hmm. Williams. Yes. Um, I've heard uh, Reverend Steve Wingham speak mm -hmm. on this matter. I, I hear uh, 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 Apostle Elijah Salifo Amakwa has also spoken yeah. on this matter. There are issues at stake here. I'll give you a clear example. The Bible enjoins us mm. as Christians to pray for those in authority and those in power. Mm. It does not tell us to frighten them. Mm -hmm. It tells us to pray for them. It says pray for those in power and those in authority. Now, is it, and why, I come back again to the point where I made where I said the Bible is a clear cut guide for daily living. Mm -hmm. In the Bible, there was a king mm -hmm. who God had a message for mm. called Hezekiah. Okay. God sent his prophet, Isaiah, to Hezekiah. Mm -hmm. Go and tell Hezekiah that his days are numbered and mm. I will kill him. Prophet Isaiah sat in the temple mm -hmm. and taught the word. But when that prophecy came, he did not sit in the temple and say, this is what Star says the Lord. Mm. He went to the king and said, O ye king Hezekiah, hear ye the voice of the Lord. The Lord says, put your house in order, for he shall smite you with death. He did not say it outside. Because prophecy is person specific. Okay. There are times when prophecy comes for a general group. Mm -hmm. Then you can make it general. But when prophecy comes specifically for one person, it is, entire, it is unethical, pastorally unethical, for you to... to uh, you see, there are certain relationships which are confidential. Mm -hmm. Patient doctor, yes. member, pastor, Law and client and lawyer. Yeah. These are three extremely confidential relationships. And so you cannot simply step out and divulge information which is based on this. And that is why it is highly unethical as a pastor. You are aware that if you go and confess murder mm -hmm. to yeah. a priest, he, would never, he yeah. would never stand as witness against you in court. Never. That is because of the ethics of the, of the profession. Mm -hmm. And so when God speaks to you about a person, you don't go and sit on TV or radio and, and broadcast it to the world. But, that is if mm -hmm. God spoke to you. Good. I was coming to that. That is if God spoke to you. Mm -hmm. And that is why senior men of God, puppets in, in, in Christ, have come out to condemn Reverend Owusu Bempa's actions. Mm -hmm. And you see, it, is, it goes beyond just the sitting president. Mm -hmm. When you listen to the gravity of the, what Reverend Owusu Bempa said, I am forced to side with Reverend Steve Wingham when he says that the security apparatus must invite this gentleman. Absolutely. I agree with you on that. Note. But uh, before you continue, let's listen to the uh, voice clip from Ejina uh, uh, Sari. At the weekend, I read on one of the uh, regular Ghanaian sites that a certain prophet who claims he's been prophesying the deaths of people says that President John Mama will die this year. The, the purpose of the message, after reading it, I discovered is to create panic and despair. But by the authority vested in me as a prophet and an apostle to the nations, and also as one of the spiritual watchmen at the gates of this nation, and with the authority of heaven behind me, I declare that the president, John Dramani Mahama, will not die a premature death before his time, but he will live to declare the works of God. Amen. The statement put on air that His Excellency will die was pastorally and scripturally unethical. In the Bible, when God told Isaiah to go to King Hezekiah to tell him he will die, he went to him, not stand in the temple. If this said minister was not gaining access to the president because of protocol, he should have gone to see the president's pastor who would have led him to the president. 
The only time prophets in the Bible went to town with their prophecy was when the king refused to repent. God has not called us to prophesy the death of people, but to give them life and to intercede for them. Hello and uh, thanks for staying with us. You are watching Majority Caucus Live on your multi TV, uh, specifically channel 006 on Joy News. I have been in the studio with Mr. Sam Jord, member of the government communication team and also an IT uh, specialist. I'm sure tonight you are more than convinced why is Samuel George not a head pastor for a particular <laughs> church. I trust that the discussion will get much more interesting in the studio tonight. Just stay tuned with us. Um, George, you, you talked about testing the spirit. spirit, but I'm sure even the vehicle, the, the person conveying this message, this prophecy, must also be subjected to some kind of test. Well, Ali, very well, because um, the Lord uses and chooses his vessels. Okay. Um, let me read First Timothy 3 from verse 1, there about. Okay. It will give you a clear understanding of the kind of vessel God chooses to use. He says, this is a true saying. If a man desire the office of a bishop, uh -huh. he desired a good work. Okay. A bishop then must be blameless, mm. the husband of one wife, uh -huh. vigilant, sober, of good behavior, uh -huh. given to hospitality, apt to teach, uh -huh. not given to wine, no striker, not greedy or filthy lucre, uh -huh. but patient, not a brawler, not covetous, one that ruleth well his own house, having his children in subjection with all gravity. It goes on and mm. on. It says, for if a man know not how to rule his own house, mm -hmm. how shall he take care of the church of God? Okay. Not a novice. It goes on. First Timothy 3 Given really gives you the characteristics of, of a mm -hmm. vessel God will use. Okay. Now, that is what brings us to the second part of this discussion. Absolutely. Where you want to look at the vessel mm -hmm. that is speaking to determine uh, after testing the spirit, if you, this, be, well, we if you want to be mm -hmm. cocksure Absolutely. that is this a message from God, you now test the, ve the vehicle or the vessel. Okay. Now, um, a cursory search mm. on Google, mm -hmm. Reverend Owusu Bempa, mm. would give you a list, a long list of stories mm. about this fine gentleman, if I may call him that. One of the stories which struck my mind is, is on City FM's website. And I was, I was troubled when I read it. But okay. the headline is Reverend Owusu Bempa and his pastor impregnate 25 year old <laughs> Marian. No, no, no. Is this for real? Yeah, City FM online. It's, it's there. Mm -hmm. If you Google, just Google Reverend Owusu Bempa. Okay. That's all. It's one, of the, it's, it's one of the top 10 searches that you will get. And when you read the story, it tells you that Reverend Owusu Bempa was a married man, mm -hmm. and then his 25-year-old maid, mm -hmm. Marian Asamwa, gives birth to an, a child. Mm -hmm. And then the lady says, I was sleeping with you, mm -hmm. Reverend. That's and I was sleeping with one of your junior pastors too. Very scandalous. And so the matter now has to go to Dosu. The domestic, uh, mm -hmm. uh, what, what's it, domestic, domestic violence, violence and victim, and victim, support, victim support unit support, yes, of the Ghana yeah. Police Service, which has, uh, and, and, and the junior pastor leaves the church and says, I want a paternity test okay. because this child could be my child. Reverend Owusu Bempa sacks his wife from his house and is embroiled in a paternity test over a child he's had or alleged to have had with his maid. Mm -hmm. Going back to the scripture, mm -hmm. it tells you, he who seeks to be a bishop mm -hmm. must be a, a husband of one wife. And should be able to take care of his home. And be able to take care of his home. Yeah. These are some of the issues you ask yourself. Again, another such story you get when you Google his name okay. tells you that recently he was invited by the Ghana Police Service <laughs> to answer questions <laughs> over running a stolen car syndicate oh. from Europe and America where he is a recipient or part of a syndicate mm. that robs people of their cars in Europe and America okay. and ships those cars to Ghana and sells. Mm. That, so that again that, is, a, is, is a case which is still pending. Mm. You okay. understand me? And so when you look at some of these things and you see 
that in every sector of life, mm -hmm. there is seniority. Mm -hmm. When you listen to his response, mm -hmm. when he was responding to the statement by Archbishop Duncan Williams, okay. Reverend Steve Omega, mm -hmm. Uh, Wingham, and then uh, yeah, uh, uh, Bishop, uh, Bishop Charles Ajinasari. Mm -hmm. yeah. He uses words like Bishop Charles Ajinasari is senseless ah. and does not understand scripture. This absolutely Now, the Bible be. tells us again that the vessel must not be a brawler. Indeed. I won't draw conclusions. It's left for our viewers to draw their conclusions. Mm. Scripture is there and circumstantial evidence about the activities of Reverend Owusu Bempa are there. Now you ask yourself, Reverend Owusu Bempa's claim to prophecy is all negative news. Yes. From a plane crash in Ghana to a plane crash in Nigeria. But, by the way, did all those things happen? Well, those, we, we, we did see a plane crash. Well, after okay. the plane crashed, uh -huh. then he tells us that he uh, did he, prophesy. Uh, oh, okay. I've <laughs> yes. Uh, he's asked questions right now that why why uh, uh, why are they blaming him for coming out? That when uh, when when when, when the late president died, mm -hmm. he said he had God had revealed to him and he was condemned for not coming out early. Mm -hmm. There again, he takes credit for the death of late president Mills and late vice president Aliu Mahama. Okay. okay, and then you see he makes a very categorical statement. Mm. He makes a statement of fact. Mm. He says the president of Ghana will die. die he didn't say may die mm -hmm. he says it will certain. die it was a certain statement mm -hmm. he goes beyond that and says and points to the fact that former president kufo mm -hmm. would also die this year hey. goes beyond that and says an ashanti king mm -hmm. will die this year goes beyond that says two major me two key leading members of the npp will die this year goes beyond that says that a uh, 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 an ahoy brother Mm -hmm. Will die this year. Goes as it goes even international and tells us that Nelson Mandela will die this year. I see. Is he a, a, a angel of doom? Is he a <laughs> prophet of doom? That is the question. He mm -hmm. made one positive prophecy, or now we've heard of two. Mm -hmm. He made one positive prophecy where he said that um, the NPP was going to win mm -hmm. the 2012 elections. Okay. This morning we've heard from uh, Ras Mubarak, mm -hmm. the NDC's parliamentary candidate. In Ablekuma North, yes. that when during his campaign he also went to his church, and when mm -hmm. he went to his church as part of his campaign, mm -hmm. uh, uh, proceeded at Odoko, Reverend Osubempa told him that God had revealed to him that Rasmu Barak will win mm -hmm. the seat, but John Mahama will lose the elections. Okay. Well, those are two positive mm -hmm. uh, uh, prophecies he gave. Okay. We had the December seventh and eighth elections. Mm -hmm. John Dramani Mahama won. Mm -hmm. Nanado lost. Rasmu Barak didn't win. Rasmu Barak didn't win. <laughs> John Mahama won. So the two positives we've had. Do okay. not come to pass. I, I so it clearly means that he, he might have a special dark angel. Well, <laughs> that, that, but, that but, but again, can, can we really call this person a man of God? You see, talking to certain senior men of God mm. and trying to understand a little bit of scripture before today's program, it is very easy as a human being to get carried away, to take your own thoughts, okay. your own thoughts and your own wish. Mm -hmm. Into the, into the spirit realm and, and, and construe it as prophecy. Okay. So what we are, what we are hearing could very well be the figments of Reverend Owusu Bempa's yeah, imagination. Because it has serious political consequences. As, especially yeah. when you look at, and then there you now want to look at, does Reverend Owusu Bempa have any relationship with the NPP? My viewers and then, want to know. And then, you see, this has, mm -hmm. when, when things like this happen, it, it, you uncover a whole, mm -hmm. you know, a, a cache of vulnerable information. What was the relationship? You, you get to find out that in 2000, mm -hmm. his son, Kofi Owusu Bempa, was working in Choice FM, which is owned by the, the, the uh, vice chairman. Are we chairman. talking about the same Owusu Bempa? Um, no, 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 not, not uh, Billy Goods. Not Billy Goods. Oh, Good. okay. Yeah, uh, but Kofi Owusu Bempa, who was okay. then working in Choice FM, which is owned by a vice chairman, Mr. Oware, vice yeah, chairman of the NPP. The NPP yeah. As soon as Kufour wins the election, mm -hmm. his son is employed in the castle to work under President Kufour. Okay. Moved out from the castle later to work under uh, Mr. Honorable Konedu Apraku mm -hmm. as a special assistant. And so you clearly see that this is somebody who has setting level of relationship with, with a NPP. setting political party. Mm -hmm. Now you want to ask yourself, is that what is informing these prophecies? Every pastor in this country votes. Okay. It is not wrong. Don't get me wrong. It is not wrong for it's a political a pastor, right. for, for a, a pastor to have 
affiliation or affinity for a political past uh, for a political a party, party. Mm -hmm. but you must be able to draw the line between your af your, your 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 party affiliation mm -hmm. and your work as a minister of God, because in your church mm. you have both people from all the eight or seven political parties that contested the last election, yeah. and even you had people who supported the independent candidates in your church. So you must be. You must be apolitical when it comes to things of God. When mm -hmm. it comes to things of God, there is no political party. And so for me, I think that Reverend Owusu Bempa, yes, uh, in rounding up, he must, he, I, I hear that the, the, some of the Christian groups, which have oversight responsibility over the mm -hmm. churches, are looking at officially issuing a statement and then okay. possibly uh, carrying out disciplinary measure against them. Because, you see, we, we, are, we live in a country where already people's mm -hmm. nerves are frayed Indeed. coming out of these elections. Yeah. We, we want the church to be a place of succor, a place where we come and have respite, comfort. not a, mm -hmm. a place of comfort, not mm -hmm. a place where we come to and we are bombarded and this, again and with politics. <laughs> you know, no, 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 no. Okay, no. Uh, thank you very much, Sam George, on that note. But I'm um, taking my final break. When I come back, uh, Mr. Sam George will tell us about his views in regards to Andrew Solomon, the supposed... Uh, gay friend of uh, the president and the matters that um, arose thereafter. Stay with me, I'll be right back. Um, hello, welcome back and thanks for staying with us. Um, I'm in the studio with Samuel George, but you know what we will do? We are going to attempt to talk about uh, this gay issue um, I for once thought that the issue should be laid to rest but I'm surprised that um, there was a release or you could call it an article in New York Times uh, supposedly I mean very sure written by Andrew Solomon uh, stating his displeasure and calling on the president to take a lead role in addressing the issue of uh, you know gay in Ghana and in Africa by extension um, I don't know if this debate is still necessary, uh, having in mind that we have a lot of problems, you know, in Ghana, issues of water, load shedding and all that, that we thought that should occupy our minds. And the last thing I want us to be treated to is a cocktail of gay issues. But of course, I have Mr. Sam George in the studio. I'm sure we'll do justice to the topic. Sam George, do you think this is a PR attempt to... Uh, continue or sustain the debate about gay and see how best you know they could achieve their aims well ali i, I think that this would be the very last platform i would speak about this matter i hope myself too. I, I i believe that this matter mm. has been overflogged and it is being pushed just to suit a certain parochial political agenda the point must be made here that um, his excellency the president mm. knows <coughs> mr andrew solomon yeah through a mutual friend. They met here in Accra when Mr. Andrew Solomon was in Accra to attend a friend's wedding. Okay. Now, um, I've heard very, very, very laughable conjectures that have been drawn. Mm. That doesn't mean the president attends gay weddings. Oh, and I asked myself, well, the president is supposed to be a friend of Mr. Andrew Solomon. Mm -hmm. The president is straight. He is not gay. Certainly. So what shows that the other? It means Andrew Solomon has straight friends. Of course. So it could very well be, and I know for certain that that wedding he met the president at mm -hmm. was the wedding between a man and, and a, a woman. woman. <laughs> now, this whole desire to paint His Excellency as a promoter of homosexual rights or somebody who has leanings or inclinations mm -hmm. towards the gay constituency, it's very, very misleading and very sad. And I think it's about people trying to shift the goalpost. Okay. Ali, when Prime Minister David Cameron mm -hmm. of the United Kingdom pa passed comments to the effect that the UK was going to be redrawing aid to third world countries and African nations, mm -hmm. which did not seem to legitimize homosexuality yeah the then president his of blessed memory his excellency john evans fifiata mills may so rest in peace mm. came out categorically and stated government's position at that time that the uk could take its money yes 
we will keep our culture and what is our heritage and our pride. We will not legitimize homosexuality. Mm -hmm. That position was a position of government, mm. of which President John Dramani Mahama was a part of. At that point in time, in less than seven days after the, His Excellency made that statement, mm. you had the then leader and still leader of mm -hmm. the largest opposition in this party, Nana Dudan mm -hmm. get off from Accra mm, to UK, to, UK <laughs> to go and have a photo ops mm -hmm. session with the, Prime with the Prime Minister. What was the message he was passing? Mm. I support you mm. and don't mind those guys. Mm -hmm. I will work with you mm -hmm. till date. Nana Dodan Kwakufuado has not come out Never. to state his position on homosexuality. Never. This is clearly a calculated attempt to turn the tables around. Ba, 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 ba. His Excellency, mm -hmm. on Thursday, yes. before he traveled, yes. Thursday last week, at the ceremony to Relocate. mark mm -hmm. the relocation mm -hmm. of the presidency from the Osu Castle to the Flagstaff House, yeah. he stated categorically that he would never support the legalization of homosexuality in Ghana. He has stated that and it is on record. The tapes are there, the media has seen it. Mm. I still ask you, what is your stance on homosexuality? We can't tell. But, but, but they argue that um, the party issued a communique uh, at that time to distance itself from any act of homosexuality and support the call not to legitimize the act. And so by extension, once he's a member of the MPP, if MPP has issued a statement, it should benefit um, Akufado. We're not Akufado asking the as MPP. an individual hasn't. We're not asking the MPP, we're mm -hmm. asking Mr. Nana Adu William Akufado. Okay. And you see, one thing we should also know is, mm -hmm. press releases from the NPP should be treated with the contempt they deserve. <laughs> the NPP issued a press statement condemning Honorable Kennedy Japan. Mm -hmm. 24 hours after issuing that statement, they organized a victory reception mm -hmm. for him at their party headquarters. Like jamboree. A jamboree. <laughs> they lifted and carried the man from, mm -hmm. from the Supreme Court mm -hmm. to their office, mm. to the national office. They issued a statement. Yes. So it tells you the value of their statement. Okay. If in one breath in their statement they are condemning him, mm. but their actions are supporting him. Okay. Where does that leave us? You see, and that is why people will say, if they've issued such a statement, mm -hmm. you ask yourself, you said that the president is supporting gays because he has a friend in the country which is over 4,000 miles away from here, Andrew Solomon, who he, who he has a professional relationship with mm -hmm. because Andrew Solomon is a publisher who helped with contacts for publishing the president's first book, mm -hmm. My First Coup d'etat. Yes. Then I would extend that logic to Nana Dudan mm -hmm. and ask questions of individuals of whom we have heard such stories about. Mm who have not come out to clear the air, such who as. work very closely, are not 4,000 miles away, mm -hmm. who do not have a professional relationship with him, but a personal relationship with him, Nana Dudan Kwa Very close. Very close. Mm. One of them we have had uh, uh, questions name. about. Name. People like Lord Komi. Mm. He has still not, I've not said he is homosexual. Okay. Let me clear but the air. But he hasn't But no, we have heard rumors of stories, mm. and there has been no categorical statement mm. to debunk those stories. Okay. People like Nana Komiya, people have asked questions about his but orientation. Any, any time of uh, homosexuality people have has asked been talked about, about, he, about he his panics. orientation. Mm. And you see, they say when, old, when dry bones are mentioned, o old, old ladies, ladies cringe. <laughs> when people <laughs> want to link the president <laughs> with homosexuality, they should be very careful. Okay. When you let, have let, skeletons let, in your cupboard. <laughs> let, 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 yeah. let me open the phone lines. Uh, you could uh, join in the discussion on 0302 211 Keep dialing. We'll be here to um, entertain your views. Yeah, some, some George. Yes. And so for me, for me once again, these are people who questions have been raised about their sexual orientations. Mm -hmm. We have not gotten clarity as to what those issues are. I would wish that subsequent to this program, they will come out and clear what their orientations mm -hmm. are. But these are people who have close relationships with Anado. Why aren't you making that an issue? Okay? For me, look, I have a personal position. Mm. And my position is homosexuality is a colossal aberration of anybody's mental capacity. Mm. I, I do not see why any sane human being mm -hmm. who is a man mm. will want to leave the natural orifices or, or orifices God has created for procreation and want to indulge in what is an act which is worse than bestiality.
Okay, let, let, let me take uh, this caller from um, Volga. Hello? Uh, Volta, sorry. Hello? Hello? Uh, we seem to have uh, lost that caller. Mm -hmm. You see, because, Ali, I have two male dogs. Mm. Even my dogs don't <laughs> mate themselves. No. They go out and look for females. Mm -hmm. So if a human being mm. wants to mate his kind, ah. when my dogs won't, mm. then it means my dog are on a higher pedestal let, than let, that let, human let, being. Let's speak to Ibrahim from Tokwa. Hello, Ibrahim. Yeah, hello. Good evening. Good evening, Ibrahim. Yeah, Ali, how are you? I'm, I'm great. Yeah. I, don't, I think if MPP people, they are trying to push us to the, push us to the wall, hmm. forgetting that they have a lot of people in their party who can be named as, as, as homosexuals, who can be named as, as homosexuals. And this, uh, this pastor, this Reverend Musu mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm surprised. This man, we were all in this country for the past eight years that Kufu ruled. No prophecy came to this man until Professor Mill, may he still rest in perfect peace, mm. assumed office as a president. This shows how hypocrisy this man is. This MPP pastor. <laughs> we are surprised. May God forgive him. He doesn't know what he's up to. Okay, Ibrahim, thank you, you very much. For you too. We, we also have a prophecy that this man is going to die. <laughs> <laughs> Please, I beg Hold you. on with your promise, Ibrahim. You. We will have Ibrahim. to test the spirit <laughs> in yes, the vessel. Absolutely. <laughs> um, yeah, let me take another caller. Um, Atu, Atu, hello, Atu. Hello. Yeah, Atu, uh, welcome to the show. Thank you. Yeah, you are nice. Um, I, I, I want to talk about the way you are comparing. Uh, Mahama and then uh, Nanado. Nanado is no more the flag bearer of MPP. So you should not worry yourself about it. Oh, but, 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 but they said they are, they are in court till another election is held for the executives. He still remains no, no, in post. Out. Other okay. people are lobbying for a and stuff like that. So <laughs> okay. it's but no we have to wait till the election. They have a party <laughs> constitution. <laughs> yeah, so you okay. should just leave him out of the situation for now. Okay. Yeah. I hear you. Thank you very much, Adu, for... Um, hello, Stephen. I have another caller. Stephen. Yes. Yeah, Stephen. You are welcome to the show. Okay. Uh, I want I want you to ask. Uh, Bempa. You mean the Reverend Ousu Bempa? No, I'm not using the Reverend because <laughs> oh. he's not Reverend. You don't think he deserves the title? Yeah, no. He hasn't Reverend. earned it. Reverend means somebody who is powerful or fear, mm. and he's not. Or, yeah. uh, I don't uh, let's forget about that one. Please. You see, ask him since he married or since he became a pastor, mm -hmm. he never touched any woman apart from her, her wife. Well, we have okay. just read a story from CTFM online, uh, you know, He's with a some big liar. Uh, He's allegations. A very, very big liar. Okay. Yeah. So. You people should warn him to stop that fooling. Hmm. Okay, thank you very much for your opinion. Um, some judge. Yes, you see, mm -hmm. irrespective of my personal opinions on homosexuals, mm -hmm. the constitution of this country remains More supreme. More force, please. The, the, the constitution remains supreme. And the constitution of this country enjoins mm -hmm. that everybody has rights and that their rights must be protected. It's mm. actually one of the preambles to the Constitution of the Republic the of Ghana. The International of Declaration rights. of the Rights of Persons mm -hmm. and all of that. You know? And so the point is, the Constitution determines that every human being should have rights. Okay. It doesn't go ahead to break down no, if the human being <laughs> should be straight or, 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 or gay. That, that is for the country to determine, individual no. countries. Yes, that is for individual mm -hmm. countries to, to determine. Look, Ali, I believe that the amount of time mm -hmm. we have, and this is a challenge to the Ghanaian media. Mm. I think the media is the fourth estate of the realm. Of course. And they have a duty mm -hmm. of entertaining and educating people at the same time. Okay. Entertainment, they call it. Mm -hmm. we must pick, yes, we must pick issues which are of necessity to the Ghanaian people. The amount of airtime we have wasted, mm. I call it wasted, not spent, talking wasted. About gays. Talking about gays. When we have Pertinent issues of water, pertinent issues of power. Mm. We have potential petrol prices going up. Mm -hmm. Look, those are the things which mm. bother the the uh, 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 Ali or or or, or uh, 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 what? 
Everybody, the truck pusher, everybody the shine boy, the, the, Kaya you, Kaya you. Akwele who sells Kilewele, mm -hmm. or, 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 or is it Enyonam who is doing anybody? Bush Kanti. Bush Kanti. Look, those are the, the issues. Beans. They don't care whether the president's friend is, the president's friend who published his book mm -hmm. is gay. No. Mm -hmm. They want, to, they want to have portable drinking water. They want to have electricity mm -hmm. when they turn on the switches in their homes. These are the things we must be discussing. How, as a country, we can have consensus and move forward and solve these problems. And you see, for me, these petty issues which score people very mm -hmm. cheap political points, which do not last even but, one but, day. But you'd be surprised to learn that um, these are issues, as petty as they are, being championed by you know powerful leading members of the MPP. I'm talking about Gabi Asari or Tridaku, exactly. for instance. You know, all over his Facebook pages, these are the issues. And that is why I am challenging the media. Uh, that look, if, if if a gentleman like Gabi or Tridaku wants mm. to be petty in his thinking, mm. he wants to be simplistic. He he, he feels that being having a, a president who whose book was published by a gay person mm -hmm. or who, who whose book was published through a contact mm -hmm. of a gay person is, is of importance to him mm -hmm. must that dictate what national discourse must be what do the majority of 25 million Ghanaians want mm -hmm. do we want to discuss the person who published the president's book mm -hmm. or do we want to discuss the deliverables of that president mm -hmm. is that president meeting our needs mm -hmm. what is the president's measure what measures is the president and his team putting in place to, st to, to stop this power crisis? Okay. What, what measures are being put in place to ensure that water flows? Mm. Those are the questions we must be asking. Because right now, I am aware, government is, is working around the clock. Mm -hmm. The institutions are working around the clock to rectify the solutions. It is not getting any coverage. Mm. Because all we're talking about no, is, gay, is gay, gay, gay. 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 <laughs> and you see, another thing that worries me is we are, we are corrupting the innocence of children in this country. Mm. We're corrupting the innocence of children in this country. Okay. Ali, as even 10 year old children, we mm. all played papa, papa and mommy uh -huh. without uh -huh. any, any, any negativity in mm -hmm. our minds. Nothing on toward. Happened. My goodness. Mm -hmm. Today, I was, I, 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 I was discussing with a friend the other day, and she said she has a four year old nephew mm. who is with his third girlfriend already. Hey! <laughs> four year old. <laughs> Serious. He had a girlfriend in church, Sunday school. Mm. More decadence. More, he had a in, in Sunday school, and then he went to, he, when they sent him to, to his international school where he's attending, he mm. sees another the girl there and says, he's I like interested. this one better than the one in church. And then he's, mm. he's no longer talking to the girl in church. Mm -hmm. He's now with this one. And they went to the mall the other day, he sees a half caste girl and says that know, he's this not going to. This is the ultimate he's choice. He's his third girlfriend, four year old boy. That is where we are sending mm -hmm. the we are taking away the innocence okay. of the of the unborn okay. generation. Uh, uh, where right now four year olds are asking you, <laughs> Mommy, am I gay or straight? Oh no, that is bad. That um, is what we are taking on our this children note, to. We end tonight's discussion, but trust me, uh, make a date with me on Thursday. I'm sure that you've been uh, properly enlightened. We had in the house resident pastor analyst. <laughs> Uh, Mr. Sam George, <laughs> member of government communication. I'm sure you learned a lot of a lot of uh, moral lessons from him. And then, if you haven't been going to church, I'm sure that your spirit has been revibrated, and that you will go there uh, come Sunday. Thank you for making time with us tonight. Uh, make a date with me on Thursday. Till then, be good and stay blessed. Bye bye.